been a year since I've got an Xbox Series X, so it's time to reflect a bit and see how ownership has been so far. As some of you know, I already did my one-year check-in with the PS5 about a month ago. I mostly used it for PS4 games and a couple of PS5 games here and there. But there hasn't been too much new stuff that really interests me, so I'm still waiting for games to come out to make it really worthwhile. Though the 4K and HDR aspect is appreciated in terms of visual upgrades. And there's also been times where I've chosen PS5 versions of games over Xbox ones because they featured, like, you know, variable trigger stuff. Plus, older games that didn't quite reach 60 FPS now run great on the PS5. With the Xbox Series X, it's a bit different for me. I got the All Access version, which includes Game Pass Ultimate. I actually subscribed to it already before because I got a good deal on it, which you may remember a while ago when they had that $1 thing. I think they have that again, actually. And uh, the total cost of the monthly payments over two years was actually cheaper than getting the console and Game Pass separately, at least at regular cost with Game Pass. Instead of buying games for the Xbox, I've generally just been playing what Game Pass offers me, and that's been pretty interesting. Having access to a library of games is different from buying games because it allows me to try games that I'd normally never touch. The nice thing is that big Microsoft and EA-owned IPs are available, so I've been able to play a couple of different Battlefield games, Halo games, Bethesda stuff, and also Forza Horizon 5. But then there's indie games that normally I wouldn't buy simply because there's, you know, there's a sea of them and sometimes, you know, you can't really be bothered to look through them all. But with Game Pass, I can try them out and there's been several fun ones that I did enjoy. Game Pass is a bit like a digital rental service in that way. I just queue up games that look semi-interesting, regardless of generation, on the Game Pass app there. And whenever it's all downloaded, I'll try some out. And now that Microsoft bought Activision, the service is going to be bolstered by more big titles and IPs. That being said, I am somebody who does like to, you know, actually collect physical games. So, uh, yeah, the service does make me feel a little bit dirty. Another major difference between the Series X and the PS5 and terms of how I use them as backwards compatibility. With a couple of exceptions, the PS5 actually works great at playing PS4 games. I've got a lot of them, so that works out well, but the Series X can also play Xbox One games and several 360 and original Xbox games. I quite like having numerous older gen games available beyond just the last generation. That being said, I don't find the backwards compatibility for Xbox and 360 games to be that extensive. It's always being praised, but I don't quite agree. Only with the last update did they finally add several DOA games, but still no support for Extreme Volleyball 1 or 2. But somehow they have Rumble Roses on there, so I don't get it. And what about the old Forza games? I'd really love to be able to play Forza 4 every now and then, but uh, yeah, they won't add any more games, so I guess I'll have to just always have my 360 connected. Overall, I think backwards compatibility is not as good as it really could be. I still think there's some major missions going on. Some, you know, highly reviewed and popular games that really should be on there. But yeah, I've been making use of backwards compatibility whenever I can. I also find it interesting how the Series X actually downloads and plays a port of the game when you put the game in. And the disc is just, you know, a proof of purchase slash ownership thing. I know it's nothing new since the Xbox One did that, but still, if you're not familiar with Xboxes, there you go, that's what happens. I mentioned before that I sometimes play CDs on the Xbox because the PS5 can't. Not really relevant for most people, I assume. Something I've been doing lately is uh, checking whether Japanese games have a release on other systems. Ever since Sony has been demanding questionable changes to non-questionable content in Japanese games for no reason, I've been checking for usually Switch or PC releases. Despite the historically bad sales of Xboxes in Japan, there's actually still a decent amount of Japanese content on the system too. Near games are a good example. One I recently bought was Tales of Arise. That game looks the same on both systems, but the Xbox version runs better, so that was a welcome surprise there. Made the decision easy. Guess I'll do a video on that. People ask me quite often actually, have you tried a Tales game? The answer is now yes. But yeah, if there is a very decent port of a Japanese game on the Xbox, then I will very much consider it. When it comes to storage expansion, the Xbox Series X offered solid state solutions pretty much right at the start. With Sony, it did take a while, but at least you have, you know, a universal solution rather than a proprietary thing like the Microsoft, uh, yeah, like that Microsoft thing 
that Seagate does. Not to mention, with the Xbox, you have less choice with storage sizes, and it also sticks out from the console because you plug it into the back instead of being, you know, inside the console like how Sony did it. Overall, I think Sony did a better job there. Something I really don't like about the Xbox is how it handles recording clips. It's easy on the PS5. I talked about that in the PS5 video. You know, you can do 4K HDR and you can even retroactively save gameplay and then transfer it onto a USB drive to a PC for editing. The Series X doesn't do that. It can only do 30 second clips, which is pretty much useless. And if you really want to be able to record long clips, you need to connect a large hard drive to the back port there, the USB 3 port. And then you have to set it as the place where the clips are stored. It's all a bit annoying since I don't really want to hook up something to the console just for that. I do use a capture device normally, but at least with the PS5, you have the option to capture a clip that may be useful for a video when, you know, I don't have it hooked up to a capture card at that moment. And the final annoyance with the Series X is that you can't just transfer your clip to a USB drive. You need to do what I said earlier and dedicate a drive for it specifically. And it has to be like a minimum size too. You know, it's like, why can't I just use my 32 gigabyte uh, USB drive? Like that should be all right. It's not the end of the world, but I move my consoles around regularly for recording. So it's not ideal to have various paraphernalia dangling off the systems. But yeah, that's basically been my experience so far with the Xbox Series X. For a while, I've been on the fence when it came to deciding which console to get first. I do end up getting every console eventually, but because I do YouTube, I bought them earlier than I normally would have. Basically, it's just, you know, whatever I could find and I found an opportunity and something was in stock, you know, I got it regardless. I said with the PS5, I'd probably wait a few years before buying one in a normal situation. But with the Xbox, I think I would have actually gotten that one first instead if I didn't do YouTube. Simply because of Game Pass. I also have a gaming PC, so it kind of works out well in that regard. Because there's several PC games that I'm enjoying on, the, uh, on Game Pass there. Like, for example, the new Age of Empires games, as well as the old ones, and, you know, Flight Simulator, stuff like that. For me, the Xbox offers a little bit more value overall from, you know, just for my personal preferences. But if you don't count Game Pass, I think the PS5 is a bit more well done and refined with how you use it. I like the menu system more. The footage recording stuff I already talked about. But overall, things are pretty close between the two. So that's that. Let me know what you think. On this channel, you'll see both the PS5 and Series X being used for all kinds of footage over the next several years. That's right, I'll enjoy the consoles rather than dig fencing with people online, which is better. Imagine that. What a concept. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.